I mean, it's still early, but when you talk about we've we've given up a little bit too much. You know, we are, we obviously want great greatness and we strive for the best. So I don't think you know, as a defense as a whole, we've been playing to the standard we see for ourselves. You're always um, happy as a defense when you can contribute to you know a win. Obviously, um, we were able to get three kills at the end of that game or three um, stops at the end of the game. We call it a kill. But um, once we did that, you know, it did breed a little more confidence in us that we can, you know, execute at a high level. Okay, but how do you assess? Have, uh, you didn't have a tackle in that game. What do you, what do you make of that? Um, did you guys watch the game? I missed it. Yeah. So if you watch the game, they, it, it's, it's all scheme. Once Aziz kind of got hurt, um, you, you understand that, you know, you're kind of, um, you're left in a situation of being on the backside. So I was on the backside a lot, a lot of those plays. And uh, granted, um, they were getting the ball out quick, and once you kind of go down in a football game, it's they don't really run play. They're not trying to win the game with the plays that they're running, right? So it's a lot of just uh, short runs, and a lot of the guys are making plays. So for me, it's really not about the stat line, especially in the game of football. I think football is probably the only sport where you can contribute to a game without having any stats. So um, when you go back and watch that tape, a lot of the balls were ran to the other side, and even with them doing that towards the end of the game when they did start to run my way, it was about setting the edge. It was about kind of doing my part, and I know teammates before previous have talked about, you know, just being able to uh, handle your job. And my main job is to set the edge and to make the runs go back inside so that my linebackers and other players can fill gaps. So just being able to contribute to a win felt pretty good. How would you assess your pass rush, pass rush productivity through the first two weeks? Uh, the first two weeks, so again, when you start to really break down football, when you go down, you know, I think the, in the first game we, and you know, teammates talk about situations, in the first game we didn't get on the field till it was about 14-0 or 16-0. So looking at that, like teams aren't looking to drive the ball down the field, they're looking to run the ball. And when you don't stop the run, um, you can't, you know, you don't really have any room to pass rush. So I think when you look at us as a team, we haven't been able to get those numbers because we haven't really buckled down on what we need to do as far as as far as handling handling situations and uh, stopping the run. There's a lot of uh, social media GMs. You know, there's a lot of people who you know want the game and want to coach and they want to create narratives. But you know, as long as I stick to the game plan and my coaches and my team are happy with what I'm able to do, whether it be drop back, whether it be you know hold the edge, whatever it may be, um, I'm just happy to contribute. Kayvon, okay, well, there was. There was a video posted of you sitting alone on the bench while a lot of the rest of the team was celebrating. I'm not insinuating anything. I just yeah. wanted to give you a chance to respond to. What part, you know, of, the, what part of the game was that? I think it was at the end after the field goal. Um, the, it looks like it in the video. After the field goal, so that was the last play. So I think when you play this game, you start to realize, and I'm only answering it like this because I know that there's videos and there's always narratives put out. But when you're in a situation where the fate of the game lands on one drive or one, you know, situation and you're kind of those people, right? The defense are the guys who are looked to, to to answer that. The only person I look to is God, right? So I'm sitting in that moment and I'm praying and I'm kind of, I guess you would say meditating and seeing the, visualizing what I'm, we're going to do as a team to go out there. So for me, it's kind of like there are too many people that wake wakes up and wants to put negativity out there. And it's like for us to come back and win a game, it's nothing but positive and for a defense, you know, everybody just wants to be able to make that play when it, when the time does come. So I think it's more of a visualization and a meditation thing that, you know, hopefully I don't ever have to answer something like that in the future. As a group, you have to avoid worrying about this, these numbers, the sacks, the takeaways, and just do your job because, you know, that's something people are asking about, including mm -hmm. us. Well, how important is it to not listen to that? I mean, because the thing is, everybody, every fan just wants to be a part of a winning team. Right, so even early in that game, our own fans are booing us. They're, they're giving up on us. And then as soon as we start to win, now everybody's cheering and everybody's excited. Everybody wants to get a jersey signed and this and that. And it's uh, it's a tough situation. But when you start to realize that the only people that matter are the people in the room and the only people who are really here for us is us. And um, as long as we continue to focus on that and continue to control the narrative and um, keep pushing for the forward, we'll be all right.